This is part two of the video series describing the production of some segmented wood eggs. In part one of this series, we described the design and production of the segmented wood rings and layers for this project. In this part two of the video series, we will describe the gluing up of the segmented disc layers to produce a tornado pattern segmented disc. In the final part three of this video presentation, we will describe the final glue up of the segmented disc layers, turning the egg on the lathe, and the final finishing of the segmented egg. Okay, I'm ready to start my glue up of the segmented eggs. And I have my scale drawings that I use as a guide. This drawing shows my center layers here, which should be here. And I'll have top and bottom layers. You know, here and here to go there. So they're all to scale. So I measured this up and I have 41 center layers ready to glue up. I have another 10 layers for the bottom and 14 layers for the top. So that'll be 65 layers, 18 segments per layer, which is 1170 total segmented pieces of wood. I have my glue up jig all set up. And I did put a, a plastic piece. I have two of these I cut, one for the top and bottom. Uh, these are just plastic so the glue doesn't stick to it. And I'll glue up my segments probably 10 or 12 at a time. I'll put a piece on top and then clamp it and as its glue is drying. So I guess I'm ready to start. I got my glue all set up, got my gloves, disposable smock all set up. Uh, I should be ready to start gluing up here now. Okay, I'm ready to start uh, mixing my epoxy cement and I have my disposable beakers and I did put lines on here at 40 mils uh, just to make it a little easier to see the lines because sometimes as you're pouring liquid in it's hard to, to read it. Be sure to thoroughly transfer all the epoxy resin to the second beaker. Then thoroughly mix the epoxy to assure that it, you get a uniform mix of the epoxy resin. I begin by using an acid brush to apply a thin coat of the epoxy to the top surface of the first disc. I then slide the center hole on the disc onto the glue up mandrel. I next apply the epoxy resin to both sides of the next disc. I locate the alignment marks on the edges of the disc that we created when the discs were sliced. I align the marks on the two discs and then rotate the top disc by half a segment. I repeat the process until a total of 10 discs have been glued and positioned on the mandrel. Do not coat the top surface of the final disc with the epoxy glue. Okay, that makes 10 layers. So let's try clamping this and then realign it if we need to. I apply as many of the spring clamps as I can around the circumference of the disc. I then remove the center mandrel from the glued up disc and wipe off the excess epoxy from the mandrel and also of the disc assembly including the center hole. Allow the glued up assembly to set at least 15 to 60 minutes before proceeding. Okay, that's been setting for about 15 minutes or so. 
The disc assembly is placed between two quarter inch thick plywood sheets with some wax paper to prevent the disc from being glued to these plywood sheets. The assembly is next transferred to my clamping press. And this is the press where I'm putting the glued up disc in just to do an initial or final setting of the glue. I have one in here already. Another other comment for cleaning up uh, this denatured alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Any alcohol is good for cleaning up the epoxy before it fully sets. So I clean these discs up. I also use this to uh, clean up the sacrificial fences on the Aki slice from the, uh, the glue when it sets up on there. It cleans it off pretty well. Next, the 10 layer glued disc assemblies are glued together with epoxy on the mandrel. Apply epoxy glue to the two surfaces of the assemblies and slide them onto the mandrel. Align the segments to continue the pattern of alternating segments offset by one half of a segment. The two assemblies are once again clamped with some spring clamps. Larger spring clamps are needed for this operation. Set the clamp assembly aside and allow it to cure for 15 to 60 minutes to set the glued joints. Epoxy is applied to the remaining layers and they are once again mounted on the mandrel. Some small bar clamps are then used to clamp the entire assembly which is then allowed to cure overnight. In the process of taking these thin slivers that I sliced off a, a segmented uh, disc and I was planning on gluing these back together in a tornado pattern, uh, again using epoxy cement to glue them together. However, the process of doing that, these discs were slipping and sliding all over the place. And I ended up with this, which was totally unusable. I mean, this top disc definitely is not aligned with the bottom. And there's a lot of, just, it moved all over the place. So I really can't use this. So I had to come up with a better way to glue these together. Uh, on the large rings, I had a center hole I could put it on a disc, you know, and, and they didn't move. But on these, I didn't have any support. So what I did is I, first of all, took my, I made some more segmented disc. And after they were glued up, I took them, I put them on my edge sander, and I ground off the edges to make it perfectly round. Ended up with a perfectly, you know, round disc. And then I made a jig, which consists of a piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood. And I put my disc on there, traced around the outside of it. And then I, on my drill press, I drilled holes uh, exactly the size of these nails. These are some, I think they're 10, 10 penny uh, finishing nails. They ground the head off. And I drilled a hole so they'd be straight, so they'd be perfectly perpendicular to this uh, piece of plywood. And then my disc fits in here nice and snugly. So this will be a glue up jig. So when I uh, cut these discs into the thin uh, wafers, put them on here with the epoxy cement and clamp them down, they won't be able to slip and slide. They're fixed in place. So this jig should work, giving me uh, much better results than I got here. So I'll go ahead and give that a try. I'll get, take these segmented discs now, cut off my 100,000 inch thick layers, and then we'll glue these back together with the epoxy cement. The gluing process was repeated as was done previously for the larger disc. I began by just gluing a set of two of the disc. Epoxy was applied to one side of each of the two discs, and the discs were placed into the jig and properly aligned, offsetting each layer by half of a segment. 
My clamping jig was designed so that one of my spring clamps would easily fit between each set of nails in the jig. I clamped a set of discs to squeeze out most of the excess epoxy so that the layers would not slip or rotate as additional layers were attached. After a few minutes the clamps were removed and another disc layer was glued and inserted into the gluing jig. The process was continued until the correct number of layers was incorporated into the assembly on the clamping jig. The jig worked quite well and the slipping and sliding that I encountered when trying to freehand glue the disc was eliminated with this jig. Before the final disc was glued in place, I used a chisel to raise the entire glued, multi-layer disc assembly in the jig so that I would be able to insert the jaws of a spring clamp both below and above the glued assembly. Therefore, after the final glued disc was placed into the jig, spring clamps were inserted between the nails and on both sides of the multi-layer assembly. The entire glued assembly can then be removed from the jig and set aside for the setting of the glue joints and subsequent placing of the glued assembly into my clamping press to allow the glued assemblies to cure overnight. These are the two segmented discs that I created using the jig and then epoxy. Uh, the layers together and they came out nice and straight. Much better than the previous ones which are unusable. So that jig worked pretty nicely. Now I'm ready to glue this up. I have my large segment of ring and this needs to be glued on the top and the bottom. And I'll actually glue these together uh, on the lathe, which will be the next step. This completes part two of the video production of the segment at Wood Egg Project. Part three of this video project will demonstrate the final glue up on the lathe followed by the turning of the segmented egg on the lathe and the final finishing of the two six inch high segmented wood eggs.